first of all, what is… what is it that you're calling as enlightenment? See, a moment of oneness that people may experience cannot be considered enlightenment. If that is a thing, we have hundreds and thousands of people who have gone through Bhava Spandana who have known moments of oneness. Seeing that moment of oneness, if we have to use an analogy, how it is, is. You are living in an enclosed area. Now you went on a trampoline and just jumped up and jumped up and jumped up. One leap really took you very high and you looked beyond the wall and you saw something incredible. But you fell back on the trampoline. You have to work on the trampoline, work on the trampoline, work on the trampoline, once in a way, again. This glimpse changes your perception. Once you have seen that, the way you look at life changes because you have seen that for one moment, the way you respond and conduct yourself in the world will change. But this cannot be considered enlightenment. Now, you have to build a ladder and cross the wall. Just jumping and looking, jumping and looking is not enough. So if you cross the ladder, if you cross the wall, if you climb the ladder and cross the wall, then you can't retain the physical body. If you are… if you raise beyond a certain pitch, if your energies raise beyond a certain pitch, then this physical body cannot hold it anymore. So for ninety-nine percent of the enlightened beings, Enlightenment and the moment of leaving the body are same. So they don't stay usually. Those who wish to stay, one thing is people who have understood or who have mastery over the physical system, only they can hold on to the system. Generally, it is only people who are on the path of Kriya Yoga who can hold on to the body because they understand the mechanics of the body, they know all the tricks of the body, so they hold on to the body. Other people who work to this level of intensity either through awareness or through devotion or through any other means, if they attain to that, either through action, devotion or awareness, if they attain to that, they cannot hold on to the body, they have to leave the body. So most enlightened beings, ninety-nine percent will leave the body at the moment of enlightenment, you will never see them again. Otherwise, you will have to play many tricks to hold on to the body. You heard of Ramakrishna Paramahamsa? Hmm? You heard of Ramakrishna? Okay, you heard of Vivekananda? Vivekananda was the first yogi who came to United States in 1893 and caused waves in this country at that time. He came to Chicago and spoke in the parliament of religions. He was the first yogi who really created some amount of awareness in this part of the world. His guru was Ramakrishna Paramahamsa. Ramakrishna is a very crystallized consciousness, but for him to retain the body was always a struggle. People in his own lifetime, people saw him godlike. People really saw him as God, they worshipped him. He was a very simple, uneducated man, but he lived in such a way that people really worshipped him. But he was mad about food. You know, he will be talking to his disciples, spiritual discourse. He'll say, just wait one minute. He will go and ask his wife, what's cooking today? <laughs> his wife Sharada used to feel ashamed, what is the problem? Even I'm not thinking about food, why you? You are God for us, why are you like this? He said, it's okay, what's cooking? <laughs> One day she felt so terribly ashamed of him. She told him, I'm ashamed of you. Why are you just stuck to food like this? So Ramakrishna said, one day when you bring the thali, thali means that part of the country, you know we in India we eat in such large plates, very large metal plates. 
and food is preserved, preserved and brought. So it is called a thali. So he said, when you bring the thali, if I don't show any interest, if I look away, you must understand I have only three days left. Almost six or seven years after this incident, Ramakrishna always ate on a swing. This is also part of the Indian thing. You know, in our homes we have large swings, like something like three by eight kind of swing. It's usually in the afternoons people sleep on it, they take a nap on it and the whole family sits on the swing. It's almost all our homes usually have these swings. Even today I have these swings at home. Very large swing where five, six people can sit on the swing and gently go about. <laughs> That's part of the family excitement. <laughs> you can't swing it hard because it's inside the building. Just gently you can sway. So he always used to sit, sit on the swing and have his lunch. So on that particular day, Sharada brought his lunch and he showed no interest, he looked away from the food. Suddenly he was not interested in the food. Then she broke down and cried. She knew only three days. He said, no point crying now, it's up, the time is up. So for him, Food is not the big deal for him, but he consciously created this desire continuously to hold on to his body. This was his way of somehow, without a desire you can't stay. If he closes his eyes, he'll be gone. So he constantly created a conscious desire for food all the time, making himself crazy about food, consciously as a device.